Celine is a French ready-to-wear and leather luxury goods brand that, in its roots, strive to deliver garments that are not only fashionable, but also made for living. The two most recent designers of the house, Phoebe Philo and Eddie Simon, have both contributed to the exploration of the politely powerful, clever, and elegant image of the Celine client. While the two designers have differing looks, they uphold the integrity and values of the house, just within different interpretations that communicate the same concepts within each designer's niche. Celine was founded by Celine Vipiana and her husband Richard in 1945 as a made-to-measure children's shoe boutique. More than a decade later, they branched out into ready-to-wear with the goal to deliver fashion for the everyday woman. The house originally stressed in the creation of garments that women could live both comfortably and fashionably within. Hence the launch of the sportswear drive line, featuring leather vests, culottes, wool skirts, and fitted shirts. By the 70s, Celine had gone international, with new boutiques opening up across the globe and went on to become the fashion house that we know today. Philo's tenure at Celine began in October 2008, and her decade-long era at the brand would breathe new life into the house, changing the overall look, perception, and essence of the brand. She presented her first ready-to-wear collection for spring-summer 2010 at Paris Fashion Week. Her first collection at Celine was widely accepted and loved. Her juxtaposition of visuals to express the concepts that would shape her time there resonated with many women through the stark contrast of tailored suiting and overcoats and balance of very elegant, feminine pieces, as well as the combination of differing fabrics, such as leathers versus silks. Her following collections carry the same versatility, consisting of very wearable clothing, such as thick wool and cashmere sweaters, streamlined dresses, baggy trousers, and loose-fit blouses. Contributing to the substantial silhouette, this concept embraces femininity, but not overtly. While being functional and dynamic, she had very luxurious designs that are meant to display intellect rather than have sole focus on the body or clothes. Her understated, assertive clothing empowered many as it was made for the modern woman who is well-rounded and worldly. It was a type of abstemious luxury that was soothing to many as it conveyed the concept of freedom by unrestricted pieces, though not the typical look of rebellion carried out with a softness and a refinement. This sensitivity was created by the utilization of very clean, simplistic, precise cuts and larger silhouettes that took up a lot of space. She embraced minimalism and strayed away from adornments, only to feature them concisely, ultimately creating even more emphasis on the lines of her clothes. She also offered the brand's namesake, It Bag, that was highly coveted and still remains prominent that brought Celine into the attention of the general public. Whitney Vargas for T Magazine stated, Philo's specialness lies in synthesizing how women want to dress with how they actually live their lives and how we want to see ourselves sophisticated, knowledgeable, not victimized by fashion. Increasingly, comfort is the ultimate accommodation of luxury, so her clothing went on to be synonymous with a graceful power and those who followed Philo deeply connected with her narrative through enclosed cognition, which is the impact that clothing has on a person's mental processes, such as how they think, feel, and function, in areas such as attention, confidence, and abstract thinking. Luxury brands do not just sell a visual identity, but an entire lifestyle and image that has been formed throughout the life of the fashion house. When one is purchasing from a brand, they are buying into a history and ideals linked to the house because of brand identity. Philo generated a brand identity that pushed forward the original concepts of the brand. Through this, she was dubbed the female gaze of the fashion industry and was known as the quote-unquote woman's designer. This identity ran very deeply for those who wore Philo's Celine garments that were conceptually linked to the modern woman whose actions were powerful, alluring, achingly cool, and intelligent. She created a sense of belonging within her clothing stating that it's about finding a uniform, a place to fit in, a clan you identify with. I just feel that 
it, it's it's just very personal. It's just kind of what what I like, and if uh, if we can collect it in some images and put it out there for people to kind of um, absorb a little bit, then it's a nice message to to sit with the collection and um, the idea of the masculinity of them, and it just felt like a a nice way of interpreting something iconic and established um, and bringing, bringing it into, you know, make, cutting it beautifully for a woman. This often referred to old sling aesthetic is very much the one that Philo sports herself. The clothing is quite personal and intimate, since so many of those who adore her take direct style cues not only from her runways, but also her individual style. Both Philo and her clients contributed to this narrative of who the Celine woman is. After finishing the fall 2018 collection, Philo announced her departure from Celine. It's common for when a new designer enters the house that the look of the house will differ. It happens time and time again. As people will work within the same concepts, it's inevitable that the execution would be different but remain in the same well of ideals. On January 21st, 2018, Eddie Simon was appointed Artistic, Creative, and Image Director of Celine, extending the brand's offerings with the launch of menswear as well. The concepts that made Celine so beloved are still prominent such as intellectual curiosity, freedoms, and the pursuit of higher experiences, just with a differing look that is more connected to the integrity of the house's roots. In a rare interview upon entering the house, the designer stated, We don't enter a fashion house to imitate our predecessor, much less take over the essence of their work, their codes, and elements of language. The goal is not to go the opposite way of their work either. It would be a misinterpretation. It means starting a new chapter. We arrive then with our own stories, our own culture, a personal semantic that is different from the ones of the house in which we create. He does this again at Celine, making use of the 60s, 70s, and 80s repertoire, back from when the brand was a Parisian boutique and not an industry house, which first led to the removal of the accent from the Celine logo, leaving many people divided. Salman explained that the logo is directly inspired from the historical version of the 1960s, where the accent wasn't used very often. He wanted a simplified and more balanced proportion. It's evident that he remains conscious of the backstory of the label through pieces such as headscarves, fitted blouses, vests, culottes, midi dresses, structured jackets, etc. that carry on the narrative that Celine is advocating for practicality over being frivolous. In regards to respecting Philo's tenure, he does carry on the concepts of the Celine client within his own interpretation. To break down one concept, for example, we will be looking at openness. It's known that he is deeply inspired by music and will often reference this within his collections. That will feature glam rock elements, 70s typography, stylistic choices, and atmospheric presentations. This aligns with the concepts of the house as it's found that there is a relationship between personality and music preferences. Those who are open to experiences will prefer reflective as well as complex music, such as classical, and intense or rebellious music, such as rock. While Eddie's image of the Celine woman may be more impulsive in nature, while Philo's is more collected, with openness depicted more maturely, both hold very similar and complex outlooks that are a part of the brand's original identity. The integration of menswear doesn't detract but rather adds on to the component of unisex options. The menswear consists of pieces such as the classic leather jacket, oversized shirling coats, ruffled and printed dress shirts, soft knits, high-waisted flare pants, and tailored suiting. Traditionally, masculine clothing is societally linked to independence, strength, and assertiveness. The type of assertiveness that Celine has become well known for. The beauty of this integration is that Simone's legacy silhouette is made of close tailoring, explicit proportions, and androgynous flourishes. It's ambiguous and elegant differing greatly from the traditional language within menswear due to the experimentation of silhouette and fabrication. The continual development of this brand identity 
is now formed through the reflections of life and references that make nostalgia modern within the heritage of styles and expanding identities through fashion. This quote-unquote old Celine aesthetic by Philo is not the only look of the house. I believe this disregards the past works of designers who have aided in the formation of the house to present day. If anything, this new Celine is reminiscent of Celine's roots that were politely nonchalant and refined. Simone is often noted for having one specific look. While many do deem this as a weakness, it is actually a strength within context of the industry. Menswear often carries a constant and is not disrupted, but his work drastically changed a sector of menswear, which is extremely rare to happen. This is where his niche lies, and of course he will carry this out, as he has honed and perfected this look. The same way that Philo has a niche within women's wear that is architectural and very feminine, with a degree of strength. This can be seen in her other work. For instance, her time at Chloe from 2001 to 2006. Her work has very similar undertones that she brought to Celine. She strives to empower and delivers. And though Salman designs differently, this does not mean that he does the opposite, but rather has another appeal. She is more modern while he is more nostalgic, but it should be noted that he can do modern work as well. For instance, his portrait of a generation collections, which act as tangible depictions of our current time, while Philo's identity pushes a look of sophistication and being collected. Eddie's is more carefree, more whimsical in a sense, and pushes that degree of freedom. It's very much just two sides of the same coin, because no matter which designer you personally gravitate towards more, the image of the Celine woman, or now man, is one who breaks mundane norms, acts out of independence, and can be aesthetically appreciated. While Eddie Salmon's work does differ greatly from Philo's, it is to be expected as they both have different approaches and enliven the brand through their designs. Both designers artfully combat traditional looks within their aesthetics, which contribute to the reconfiguration and reform of the Celine image. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, like, turn on notifications, and comment. Thank you so much for watching.